Hello and welcome back. This is Jero here. Uh, I'm actually releasing a video on time for once. That everyone can rejoice. Uh, Alright, so today will be the Divinity video. Um, there isn't as much to say on Divinity as compared to sailing and gaming as far as optimizing the gains for it. Because gains towards... well. Things that boost Divinity gains, specifically the points, um, are few and far in between sources, and they're all multipliers to each other, which is very interesting. And the XP gains, again, are fairly limited in their sources at the moment. So, uh, while I will go through those, um, today's video will be more about what uh, gods and do, like what the gods do and use cases of them and what I think optimal um, later on metas will end up being. Um, it'll also be kind of kind of going through the early portion of Divinity. Uh, spoiler alert, a lot of Divinity gains are going to be gated by your artifact progress. Um, so let's just go ahead and jump into it. But Divinity is less complicated than um, gaming or sailing. However, there are a lot of intricacies, and I do think there's a lot of depth that will... I think Divinity is going to have a lot of the depth in terms of uh, when you want to use what gods. So let's go ahead and get into it. So as you'll see, first off, we'll go through stances. Currently, I have six of the stances unlocked. When you start off, you're only going to have Kinesis. So... The stances determine your base divinity and XP gains. Um, divinity points and I guess divinity, yeah, divinity points and divinity XP gains. Um, so whatever your divinity XP multi is is going to um, affect that, and whatever your points per hour multi is is going to affect that. So if I go ahead and go to one and one, I see I should be getting about fifty XP. Or, uh, excuse me, um, yeah, 26.24 XP multi and 66.32 divinity, overall divinity multi. So that is all the different multipliers acting on top of each other. Uh, the first god you get gives you a divinity gain multiplier, and that is upgraded through gaming resources. The second god you get is a divinity gain multiplier that is upgraded through sailing gold. The fourth god you get is a divinity multiplier upgraded via money, my favorite. And um, the two relics that I'll go look at in a second are gained through sailing as well. So basically three of the divinity multipliers are upgraded through sailing in some way. I, either through gold or two artifacts. Um, so you're going to want to prioritize uh, those because they will drastically boost your, your um, divinity gains. Uh, also, there is a post office box that you get via sailing, uh, which will also increase your divinity gains. This being here. It's not visible at the moment because it's a little bugged. Uh, there. So you'll see it's 18% divinity gain on this character. Um, and Divinity XP. Pretty good. Pretty good box. So you're going to get that through sailing. So basically, the better you are at sailing, the better you are at Divinity. Pretty much guaranteed. Okay, so now that we talked about that, you're going to notice how drastically useful the um, stances are. So I go from 6,632 on one character to 13,263. Um, just by upgrading the stance one time. Going to focus, you can see just how much points I get per hour. Uh, that's because all of those multipliers are going off that base. So it's just very, very strong to upgrade the stances. Uh, early game, you're going to just be working up through you know, Kinesis, Chakra. When you get to focus, there is an argument to go between focus and Chakra because you're going to get more XP on Chakra. Personally, I... I would go focused up to the fourth god because you want to unlock this divinity multiplier. Um, 
So my personal take on it and what I did uh, was push focus until you unlock Rabbit God, uh, then switch back to Chakra until you unlock Mantra. With Mantra, you then spam all ten of your char- or all nine of your characters uh, or eight, depending on you know what do you want to do. You put them all on Mantra until you unlock Vitalik uh, or Vitalik. Uh, then you get Vitalik. Vitalik is nuts because the XP per hour is insane. I go from 183 compared to what 25 or something, 26. So if you want to level your divinity, uh, Vitalik is going to be your best stop. Uh, Tranqui, Tranqui, um is going to be basically you're, you're going to work towards Tranqui. Then at Tranqui, you get, have a choice to make. Uh, you can either keep sitting on the altar, or you can go, you know, push through World Five like I am doing currently. All of my characters are have Tranqui on, so they're they're still gaining Divinity XP. Uh, wall multitasking, and I do think that's very powerful. So you definitely want to go up and unlock Tranky, so you have that option. Um, the level sixteen eighty uh, bonuses, uh, I believe it's ten ten fifteen fifteen or like eight eight ten ten. I can't remember. Uh, the wiki will have them, but they're very powerful. They're just late game focused, and by that time you can kind of understand what you're wanting to do. Uh, Vitalik is really what you want to get to, though, uh, because it unlocks Tranky very quickly. Do not send all of your characters onto Mantra, just because the base XP does not play with the multiplier as well, as you would expect. Again, going from 26 to um, 183, even if you had all, all 10 characters on it, I would just put all 10 characters on Vitalik. I don't know why, because Mantra should outperform it with 10 characters on it, but it doesn't feel like it does so it's probably just either due to rounding in the how the xp is calculated or maybe double xp procs but not 100 percent sure i do know mantra xp given to other players it, it just acts weird with the with the multi so okay so that's leveling and early game um you know what what you want to do basically i would push hard for divinity points gains until you get to the fourth god after the fourth god you can keep pushing divinity gains the next biggest bonus is going to be when you unlock permep permep is 2x more divinity and 2x more divinity xp gain uh i just think this god is overall really crazy for your world 5 progress uh i do think it's not mandatory but highly recommended to have it on a, a one character at all times uh, the, the boat sailing speed is tremendously important for pushing the later islands. The gaming plant speed, whatever. Um, but the both the, the blessing, the sailing speed from the blessing, and the passive as well are just crazy good. So, And then obviously, yes, the, the 2x divinity gain and 2x uh, xp lets you go crazy with um, how much divinity you're gaining. So... Uh, as you can see, 13,000 an hour. Granted, when you get to the later gods, stuff scales quite hard. So, getting to like the fifth, sixth god isn't too bad if you get the if you get lucky with sailing relics. Pushing past per map can be a little tough uh, if you're not lucky. So, anyway, that is what my like early take on divinity is. Again, this is still just fairly early on in world five and maybe we'll come up with better things later but um but now okay and i'll go actually i'll show you what islands the uh divinity um relics are on the first island with it is rocky peaks the ancient a ashen urn very strong if you have a level 400 character um and pushing to level 400 in world five is quite easy um and the Jade Rock can be found here at the Toxic Bay. Um, and the post office box is this one. So those are the three islands you want to target down if you're trying to go for Divinity. Uh, but I do recommend making your sailing a little bit more efficient first. Like, you, you want to be pushing your speed and loot... Like, as mentioned in my sailing video first, and then you can focus down the divinity gains, because I think that's more efficient if you can have more boats hitting those islands. Um, 
because just sending your strongest boat out one at a time, one boat or one chest every two hours, you you can get unlucky on getting these uh, relics. And I just think pushing your loot values and your sailing speed so you can have like five to ten boats going for those, uh, much better. Um, so basically, that's all the ways to optimize sailing or sailing divinity XP gains and divinity points gains. This, like I said, it's not particularly complicated. It's just focus on unlocking the three gods and the two relics primarily, and getting a permap unlocked. Permap being the, the the another true multi. So, so that's all well and good. But let's talk about where divinity is going to get um, interesting. What gods should you have on what character highly depends on what you're doing. If you're trying to push through World 5 portals, Newbie Sect is best for you. Newbie Sect will let you push through the portals as fast as possible. Um, it is tremendously better than Snake, the 30% AFK gains from Snake. Um, but if you're trying to keep your lab bonuses active, which you should, because some of those lab bonus, like the, the 2x multiplier from on kills on lab is multiplicative with Nubisect. So that's 4x kills. So you're wanting to be having some semblance of balance between enough people with Arctis, Snake, and whatnot. So currently, I have... This is my Siege Breaker. It is my green mushroom killer and it is on the Nubisect. So basically you want Nubisect for pushing Death Note, um, spores if you need more money because money is quite powerful in World 5. So people will be looking to push spores. Um, or if you're just trying to get to 100 mil on the death notes. Apart from that, there really isn't any reason because the 2x god doesn't give you more materials gained. It doesn't give you um, better rares. Uh, stuff like that. Uh, the other use of the 2x god is if you have lower kills per hour, you can actually use it to um, cap your forge extremely quickly. Um, basically, you can go on an archer and kill, let's say you're getting like a million frogs per hour, and you put the god on and it's two million frogs an hour now. Um, that's twice as fast that you're, you're um, for smelting all the bars in your forge via the uh, smelting everyday skill. So that's like somewhat useful for that god, but um, overall, we're just gonna go ahead through the gods and like what I think their use cases are. So first off, snake god. Uh, snake god's the first one you're gonna unlock. Quite strong. Uh, I uh, recommend unlocking this god first before trying to do Sugma's quests because it'll help with Sugma's quest, um, and it's way easier to get early than newbie sect is, obviously. Um, so. Once you get Snake God, you'll you'll use it to push all the Sugma quests out um, until you get to the newbie sect. What Snake God I think will be used for the most will be um, uh, cookers, people who like a uh, blood barbarian, or blood berserkers that are cooking um, will use it because it's just more more ladles per day. Um, Sampling, it's going to be probably best in the slot for anyone who's taking a sample, as it will affect your sample gains, whereas newbie sect shouldn't and doesn't. Um, if you're material farming, Snake God's going to be best for you. Um, like if you just need, let's say, a ton of World 5 items that you can't, Candy and Prince for Arlo, you can use Nabatu. Um I'm just going to call this Snake God, by the way. I'm not really going to say Snabatu every time. Um, though I might try to, at least. Uh, anyway, so Snake God, useful for that. The accuracy and defense bonus is mostly just to help people breaking into World 5. This isn't going to be particularly useful later on for anyone, uh, especially because while the accuracy does give you crit percent chance via over-accurate crit, um, you're going to be using this god AFK and critting afk while helpful to your damage afk doesn't really do much and same thing with the defense gain you could just put uh food on but this is helpful for newer players so you're mostly going to want the divinity gain bonus and while it gets stupidly expensive via gaming the early levels of it are still going to massively help your um your divinity gains early on next up we have arctis um basically this character or this god lets your characters always active in lab quite nice the passive bonus for talent levels 
Very interesting. I've gone back and forth on this. I think active Bubo, or a basically any active character, is probably going to want this bonus. Um, for Bubonic Conjurer, you're going to be getting... Um, like slightly longer flatulent spirit times just like there's so many things that it slightly increases and it's a pretty decent increase to damage as well just because getting like multiple gilded sword level sharpened axe power overwhelming untwisted robes etc like all of your basically six levels on all talents 6.5 levels on all talents actually is a fairly sizable bonus as you can see why i am currently training vitalic uh divinity on my uh, bubonic conjure so personally i think arctis is going to be quite strong at least for the early portions of world five until we have more bonuses um i think for active bubonic conjure it's going to be quite decent the blessing for it is relatively easy to max out via gold, and it's quite a strong divinity gain bonus as well, so it'll boost your um, speed through unlocking the gods. But yeah, I think Arctis is going to be quite strong. You're also going to use it for anyone who... Uh, I, I, I'm going to say like lower value characters. Like, um, So if I'm just going to look at my roster here, I can only be active on one character, so I have another AFK... Bubonic Conjure. An AFK Bubonic Conjure just isn't particularly useful. It can cap maps, it can farm materials, it can do stuff, but it's not nearly as um, useful as like an AFK Bowman or Siege Breaker or like an AFK Maestro because Maestro is going to have slightly higher rares, um, slightly higher AFK per gains, etc. than a Bubonic Conjure. So for me, right now, I'm leaving because I want to push through World 5 on these characters, but they're not as useful, I'm leaving Arctis on them just to maintain my lab bonuses. Just because I don't really care if they're not getting Snake God or perm, um, Newbie Sect value. I would rather boost my more important characters. I think that is a better plan overall. So you're, you're going to want to leave it Arctis on your characters, if you're wanting to leave lab, that is. Uh, you're going to leave it on the characters that would probably be sitting in lab anyway. Um, so, yeah, it's just useful for giving them, you know, freedom from lab. The passive talent bonus, not particularly useful AFK for pretty much any of them, but it's there. Uh, newbie sect we pretty much went through already, but basically this one's going to be useful for, primarily for spore farming, but any death note kills in general, like if you're pushing 100 mils on all of your, um, death note port or death notes go for it. Uh, if you're pushing through World 5, again, it's the best god to do so with. The passive damage bonus kind of sucks. I don't know what it's additive to, but it's a... It seems like it's a ton of damage, but in real reality, it's not very much at all. And scaled efficiency. This one confuses a bunch of people. Um, I'm not 100% sure how, it, how exactly it's coded, but the way it works is basically the more base skill efficiency you have, the more um, this will benefit you. And I believe it's either base skill efficiency or percent skill efficiency, one of the two. But basically, this is supposed to be helpful towards your um, <clears throat> your skill efficiency the lower level you are. Yeah, so this scale to skill efficiency is fine for newer players, but later on, it's not as relevant. <clears throat> um... Hurry Up is the next one I'm going to talk about. It is... Uh, character produces 3x more resources at 3 to printer. Works with lab bonus. So the lab bonus, that is 2x. But won't affect the displayed printer amount. Um, I believe this one is going to be the go-to one for basically endgame World 5. Um, personally, I'm probably going to put this on most of my main skillers and then chuck them back in lab once they're done doing everything useful that they can. Uh, and I do believe that this is going to be overall the best for my account. I just think 6x, because this this uh, gets multiplied by the lab bonus, so there'll be 6x resources on those characters. I think it's just very strong. Um, so I'll probably be doing that. Maybe maintaining Arctis on like uh, my Hunter, for instance, where their samples aren't going to be quite as impressive, but I still want them to maintain lab bonuses. Basically, Harry Up, I'm going to be putting on my um, my skillers. 
Uh, the passive bonus is a multiplicative coin gain. So this is actually, you know, uh, one of the stronger sources of coin gain you, you can get in the game. Because it stacks with itself. So if I have five people on Harry Up, I get five times this bonus. And last but not least, it has that divinity gain. So um, quite strong. Uh, you can max it via money. Uh, for most players, you're going to be getting to like the 60s, 70s range before it starts struggling a little bit. <clears throat> but it is a good divinity gain multiplier. So uh, next up, you have uh, Goharut, or I just call him Gogurt. Um, this one's a little bit more niche. Being connected to the lab also counts as divinity altar. So what are the ba the gains of this? So this is better if you're strictly focusing on divinity because it boosts your other characters uh however personally if i was going to like basically if you're on the altar with arctis gogur is better um but honestly i don't see myself using goharu very much um Personally, I'm probably going to train majority of Divinity through Tranky up to like 60 and then maybe push Divinity more. Um, but if you're trying to level Divinity, I think Goharud is fine. What is interesting here is the passive bonus. Uh, it's actually going to be best for you to have a bunch of characters boosting your skillers while you're sampling because that will affect their samples. Now, you only have one on Link a week. So when you're going to sample, what you can do, a little trick, is you wait until a right around your week reset. You can check that via here. The weekly reset won 109 hours. So if I waited five hours before my reset, or whatever, you know, 10 minutes, what I can do is go in. No, whoops. <clears throat> I can unlink all of my characters, and then I can link up whoever I want to sample with, and then put the rest on Goharut. Um, and then my week reset comes around, and I can unlink again within like that five minutes or whatever I wait. So I can leave all of them on Goharu until I finish sampling, and then just swap back to my regular build of gods. And that way you could sample without being stuck with having a whole bunch of characters on bad gods where you have to just shove them back in lab and whatnot. So that's a little tidbit there. Uh, but I think Goharu is going to be basically a good one if you want to boost one specific character and generally when you're going to do that you're going to be sampling so or if you're going to candy spores you could use goharut for instance so it's a interesting god but a little bit less interesting and then you have the sailing speed it gets ridiculously expensive as you can see but hey i'll take any sailing speed uh next up you have the elephant god when claiming non-candy afk gains also prog progress one of the following by the afk time uh, refinery, 3D printer, cooking, pet breeding, sailing, and gaming. Uh, passive bonus is class XP. This is additive. It's not particularly useful at all because we have just so much class XP through other ways. And you can't upgrade the divinity gain yet. So what is useful here is this little, the, the regular link bonus. Um, I'm not going to lie. I think the elephant god is kind of mid. It's fine, but... So we'll look at these bonuses. Let's say I let's say I have AFK for ten hours. Ten hours of refinery time, pretty nice, honestly. I, you know, I'm I'm happy with that. 3D printer, decent. I I'm not too, uh, like that's that's good. I I don't mind that, especially if I have a lot of on rabbit. You know, not bad. Cooking, that's like, you know, six ladles of gains. Pretty bad. You could just get way more ladles per day by cooking uh, by having a blood berserker cook. Pet breeding, really useful. I mean, really useless. Uh, just, I don't know when this would be useful at all. Sailing, we already have multiple sources that give us sailing gains for AFK time, and this does stack with them. So you could, or it doesn't stack with them, but basically this is a separate role. So let's say I have my Hamter's proc, and I get sailing gains for that, and my Elephant God hits sailing. You will get two times your AFK time for sailing, which is nice. But again, there's already enough sources of sailing AFK gains or converting AFK gains to sailing that 
I don't think it's necessary to lose a whole god slot over it. And gaming is like the same basically thing. Um, gaming <clears throat> just scales so out of control that getting a couple hours here and there just isn't particularly useful. So of these six um, use cases, one of them is outrightly useless in my opinion. <clears throat> one of them is extremely bad. Cooking, hitting cooking is really bad. Sailing and gaming are mid. They're like okay. 3D printer is like a slightly better than okay, and refinery is probably the best one. So you would only use this god if you're really behind on salts. Otherwise, I don't recommend this god pretty much ever. And then you'll hit permap. Permap again. I went through it already, but quickly, it's just I think it's a fantastic god. You're gonna get two x more divinity and two x more divinity XP gains, um, but you can only have one character on it. So you only need to put, like, basically you just take whatever your, your least valuable character is and you toss them on permap. And the sailing bonus speed alone, uh, especially for early mid World 5, I think is massive. Um, plant grow speed, again, it's okay, but eh, it gets fast enough. Uh, mostly the 2x divinity and 2x, 2x divinity XP gains I think is most relevant. Uh, I think this god is going to be good even up to late game because you're going to have your characters on Tranky most of the time. And divinity levels boost these passive bonuses on all the gods. So, you know, you're going to be wanting to skill your divinity constantly. And I do think uh, permap is going to remain relevant all the way through. And then you get Flutterbiss, which I have is whatever you level up a skill that's low, over level 50, you get a divinity pearl. You can get a couple of them through the quests, uh, which gives 40% XP to any skill under 50. Passive bonus is skill XP, and then total damage, which you can't level yet. Pretty useless useless god. Um, again, I don't really see when this is going to be particularly useful. Uh, it's pretty easy to get skills over level 50 now. Um, I just don't really... Unless there's a way to bo b um, raise what this minimum level is later, I don't see it being particularly useful. And then the last two gods basically have no blessing at the moment, uh, and they will be on the wiki, but they're not really useful right now. So so basically that is my um, spiel on what the, uh, the gods are and uh, when I think you're going to be using them. Uh, hopefully that helps a little bit. Again, this is still an early-ish guide, so you know we'll be figuring out more later. Um, but yeah, hopefully that helps. Sorry if my voice is a little bit, um, bad. I just, uh, I don't know. I don't think I'm coming down with the cold. I hope not, but I have been feeling not great. So yeah, anyway, I hope that helps. I will see you all in the next one. And, uh, yeah, next one probably going to be, um, yeah, next video, probably going to be like account progress or maybe just like a tips video that I've come up with in World 5. Like maybe I'll go through new meta on Bubont Conjure farming or, you know, or some of the other old videos that I should have made a while ago. But if you have any anything you want to see, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.